My previous video was about the rectangle tool. This video is going to be about the ellipse tool. If you haven't watched the rectangle tool, it's going to go into a lot more detail than I'm going to go into in this one. So I'll be saying shortcuts as their letters and I'll be running quite quickly through this one. So if you're not sure about any of the effects that I'm going through, have a look at the rectangle tool video as well. I'll link it here. So the ellipse tool. If we click it, you'll see down the bottom of our menu, there's all these different options. It's very, very similar to the, the rectangle tool. So let me just open a file. So you see we've got an image here. The original way this is set up is that if I just draw a circle here, the circle can be slightly warped. It doesn't really make a difference. It's a bit slow, this effect on my version of GIMP. I don't know if that's usual for everyone else, but mine, the elliptical select is pretty slow. So we can just take a selection, Control c Control n and Control v paste that into a new image and you'll see we've got this nice elliptical image here. The next selection along, this is add to the current selection, we can also hold down shift to get this option. You'll see that as I click that is selected, but as I let go it goes back to the normal selection. So that will just add on to the selection that we've already got. We've got the subtract from the current selection, so if I've got my selection here, we've got this option, we can either click it and have it on so we don't have to hold new buttons down, or we can hold down control and it will do the same thing and it will take a chunk out of our current selection with the ellipse that we've just drawn. The last option we've got is the intercept with current selection, so I wanted to make like a rugby ball selection, I could click this option here, I can draw another circle try and make that rugby ball shape based on my new circle and the outside of the original circle that I've drawn. So if I let go you'll see what I mean. So it's drawing the two intersection, the two intersecting shapes that are being selected and it turns them into one. So if I control C, N and V into a new image you'll see, okay it's a very bad rugby ball but this is the sort of thing it does. It just takes that selection of the shape that you've made with the two intersecting objects. So if we go back to our normal options, anti-aliasing, it basically creates smooth edges. So if you use more than one effect, you can find that your image gets distorted slightly and um, the edges become quite jagged, they're not smooth. So this is a really good thing to have switched on pretty much all the time. Another thing I mentioned in the previous video, the highlight option down here. So if we've got highlight selected, it's just gonna keep what you've selected highlighted and the rest will go into shadow. I like having this switched on. The annoying thing is that it does show you the whole square around the selection even though you're only having what's inside the marching ants. So that's a little bit annoying with this tool in particular. Feather edges, this gives you a nice faded outlook to the edge of your selection. If we boost that all the way up, take a selection here and control C, control N, control V you'll see that it's faded out here to the edge if I just click off of that you see a nice faded edge to your image, it's great for collages and things like that the other option we've got is to expand from the centre, so if I just unclick all the other options usually you draw your circle from the corner, so you'd have a guess where the centre of your selection is so if I wanted that tree in the centre I'd sort of try and get the circle around it like that. However, if we click expand from center, we can just click on the thing that we want in the center of our selection. Just click off of that. So I'll click in the middle of the tree, pull out, and it expands from the center. So I know that that tree is always going to be in the center of my image. One thing that you'll notice is a problem is this distortion of your circle. Say you wanted a perfect circle and you're going to have this as a problem. However, if we click fixed and aspect ratio selected, it's going to keep a perfect circle. So again, if we click in the center of the tree and pull out, that no matter how I pull my mouse, that circle is always a perfect circle. So if I paste that into a new image, you'll see that tree is perfectly centered in the circle. Another option you've got within this fixed is width. So width and height you can select, um, maybe I wanted it to be a thousand pixels wide. Then it will only let me go a thousand pixels wide. I can change the height, that's not a problem, but it will only let me go a thousand wide. So that's quite cool. So obviously same with height and in size you could sp pick a specific size. So say I wanted it a thousand by a thousand pixels. 
then it's going to keep a thousand by a thousand it's not going to let me change that into anything else when you use this effect uh, you don't just click and expect the circle to appear you click and slightly drag and the circle will appear and then you can just place it where you want it you can change between pixels and millimeters and things like that all the different um, sizes that you might want to choose between and down here we've got guys now normally you just have whoops and take fixed off normally you just have your normal selection here it's just a plain circle and these um, pulls on the side these let you change the size of the circle without using the tiny fiddly little arrows that most programs use however if we put on center lines then it's going to draw a line vertically and horizontally to show you where the center of that circle is so you could place an object into the circle and still have like quite a distorted shape like say I wanted this sun highlight to be in the circle of my center of my circle I can draw my selection and drag that highlight in so if I change that there I control C control N and control V and you'll see that that highlights nicely in the middle because it was placed on the spot where the lines cross so bearing this in mind you want to place it where the lines cross not in the squares but you've also got rule of thirds this is a photography thing and they basically say the powerful part of the image should be lined up where these lines cross so if I wanted this tree to be an important part of the image I can place the crosses it actually goes over two crosses here on that tree if I control C control N and control V you'll see that even though it's not centrally in the image it's still quite a prominent part of the image because it's placed in that powerful line the same with the golden sections it's the same sort of thing it's just a slightly different shape so if I move that along you'll see that the tree is slightly further into the image than it was before not by much but if we have a look at that in a new image it's still quite a prominent part of the picture if you have a play around with it you'll notice that pictures are quite powerful when you use that rule the last effect we're going to look at is the auto shrink and shrink merge down the bottom here so for this I'm just going to make a new file and we need two layers if you haven't got your layer option open go to windows up the top of here go to dockable dialogues and just click layers there and the box will open so at the moment we, you see we've got a background layer we don't actually want to use this background layer so we're going to lock it uh, just with this little chain here and we're going to create two new layers just let it put uh, the options it wants make sure that transparency is used for the layer fill type okay so these are the two layers we're going to use so I'll just name them quickly I'll name this one blue or bluer and this one red so on the blue layer I'm just going to choose a blue colour and I'm just going to draw up here I'm going to draw blue that and it's like a really stupid sun and on the red layer I'm going to draw a smiley face down here okay now the rectangle select tool works a lot better than the ellipse tool I've noticed uh, with this option but I'm going to show you how it works anyway so at the moment as you can see I've got my red layer highlighted so if I drew an ellipse select around here and then I clicked auto shrink it would just put an ellipse around the red layer however if I did another ellipse and I had shrink merged selected it's going to pay attention to the blue layer as well so when I auto shrink it's paying attention to the blue layer as well as the red I'll just show you with the rectangle so if I had the red layer selected and I clicked auto shrink you see the box would fit perfectly around the content in that layer and also if I did the rectangle and did shrink merged and then auto shrink it fits perfectly around the two different bits of content for some reason the ellipse tool doesn't work as well if I find out why I will do another tutorial but it kind of works but it doesn't really go right around the object like the rectangle tool does it kind of does the best job it can I think this only works with layers that have a transparency in them so you see in the layer option here to the right you can't see a white background behind these two layers because they're transparent layers if you try and do this um, select and auto shrink in an image it can't differentiate between the different parts of the image so it, it will only auto shrink to the 
outside of the whole image it can't see the little details whereas if it's a drawn layer like this with a transparency it knows where the content is in that layer because everything else is blank so that's that's that option there hope that clears up the ellipse tool and stay tuned for the next tutorial